Welcome to a Faithful God podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Rotzel, and today on the show, we're going to talk about how to make the most of the Advent season. And I've got not one, but two free resources to really help you out with this. So grab those earbuds and your favorite beverage and join me for today's show. Hey friend, welcome back. I am so happy to have you here. I hope to all my U.S. friends that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving yesterday. We certainly did. Now it wasn't, uh, I didn't get to have my youngest with us, unfortunately. He's a police officer and he was on shift. So that's kind of part of it. It's part of the job and what happens. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll get him next year because we didn't have him last year either. Or we did, but we had to kind of rearrange things. But listen, since we're about to start the Advent season, today's show is all about how to make the most of your Advent season. Um, listen, it's, it gets so hectic during Advent season, doesn't it? With the hustle and bustle of Christmas. And I just wanna make sure that before we get started with Advent, which by the way, is on Sunday the 3rd, it begins th- Sunday the 3rd, I want to make sure that you're setting the stage to make sure that you have a good, and, and a good, peaceful Advent season. So I do have a free resource for you to help you make the most of the Advent season. So stay tuned and I will give you all the, ju- uh, excuse me, juicy details soon. So listen, in this episode, we're gonna go back to what we always go back to, right? We always go back to God and the priorities of God. So that's what we're going to do first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give you three steps to help you make the most of this Advent season. Three easy steps with little practical applications that you can um, that you can use in this season examples and applications because here's the thing we want to focus on Jesus and we want to focus on enjoying time with our family not running around like chickens with our head cut off not um, not going over budget and spending too much money on Christmas gifts right we want to make it about Jesus So before we get started, I do want to tell you just a little bit uh, or just tell you a little story. So up until several years ago, I used to make a lot of our Christmas gifts. I enjoy DIY projects, but the truth is it got completely out of hand. I remember one particular Christmas, I actually pulled an all-nighter. When everyone got up in the morning, I helped, you know, they helped me load all these gifts I had been making into the car. We jumped in the car for a 12-hour trip to Illinois. I was exhausted, as you can imagine. And so, you know, it just, it was, I was so wiped out. It was hard to enjoy what we were, you know, the moment that we were in going back to visit family and all of that. Plus, it wasn't about Jesus. So I knew something had to change. And so that's when I set up some rules. I, I, I look back on that on my drive there. I kind of did a, a quick little inventory, if you will. And I, I thought to myself, you know what? Something's got to change. What is it that I need to do? And what I did was go back to the priorities of God. And I set some rules for myself, some ground rules. And so those rules were this. Number one, if I wanted to make a gift for someone, they had to be done by the beginning of October. Hands down, there was no ands, ifs, or buts about it. That had to be done. My second rule was all my gifts had to be wrapped at least one week prior to Christmas. I don't know about you, but there have been plenty of Christmases where I have have wrapped my presents only for them to be unwrapped a couple of hours later. And I just wasn't doing it anymore. I enjoy seeing them under the tree. That makes me happy. And number three, I would spend a day watching Christmas movies and sipping some scrumptious chai and wrapping gifts because wrapping gifts bring, it fills me up. It makes me happy. I enjoy wrapping gifts. I enjoy making them pretty for my, for my loved ones. So that was what I did. Those were the the rules that I had set for myself. And after that first year of abiding by those rules of following those rules, I completely quit making gifts for people altogether for Christmas. Now I would go and sometimes and make a gift for someone, you know, for something else throughout the year, but no longer was I doing gifts at Christmas. Now, some of you are thinking, oh my goodness, I can't do that. I make all my gifts. I want, or, or excuse me, my prayer for you is this, that this Christmas, 
that this episode will give you the nudge to say, you know what? I'm going to cut back a little bit. Maybe you won't cut it out altogether, but maybe you're going to cut back a little bit and not make as many gifts. I, my prayer is that this gives you permission to let go of the things that truly don't matter so you can focus on the things that do. So before we get started, I do want to let you know, I do have a free holiday planner. I absolutely love this print. Uh, excuse me, planner, Schmidt, can't talk here. I absolutely love this planner. And what I do is every year I print it off and my husband and I sit down and organize everything. We allocate all the funds. We know how much money we have for Christmas. We all allocate it to everyone. And so that way we know who's getting what, and we don't go over budget. Did you hear that? May I, can I just get an amen on that? We no longer go over budget at Christmas ever. So listen, this holiday planner, it's got things in there like Thanksgiving meal, which I know that's already, already gone, but planning your Thanksgiving meal. It's got planning your Christmas meal and your Christmas uh, baking, Black Friday shopping, Cyber Fr Friday, or excuse me, Cyber Monday shopping. It's also got, of course, your gift allocation planner pages, so much more crafting pages, planning pages and stuff. So listen, hop on over to footprintsofinspiration.com slash holiday planner and download, grab the free planner. Now you don't need all those pages. What I do is I go in there, pick and choose what I want. And then what I do is send it off to Staples, just online, send it to Staples. They print it, bind it, and I'm good to go. So that way, um, and it's less than $5, easy peasy. So again, go over to uh, footprintsofinspiration.com slash holiday planner. Get your holiday planner now so that you can help have a stress-free, right? Another, another step to having a stress-free holiday this year. Now, before we can get started with determining how to make the most of the Advent season, we must always go back to the priorities of God. That's the place we need to go back to. And if, you, by the way, I want you to hear me here. Any time in your life that you see things that you feel like things are out of control, you've got too much on your plate, you start getting overwhelmed, that's when it's time to take a step back, take some inventory of what you have going on in your life and start by going to the priorities of God. Go to the priorities of God and determine, do all these things that I'm doing, do they fit within the priorities of God? Remember, when we say yes to one thing, we have to say, we're, we're saying no to something else. Either that or, and, and that, what that something else may be is our mental health, right? We're going to talk about that. We've got to remember that we can't do it all and be okay with it and be okay with it. Let's have a peaceful holiday season this year. So the very first thing we want to do is go to the priorities of God. And what are those priorities? God, self-care, spouse, family, ministry, and work. Let me repeat those, my friend. God, self-care, spouse, family, ministry, and work. And in this episode, in order to make the most of our Advent season, we're going to focus on Jesus, self-care, and family. So step number one, keeping Jesus your very first priority, your first focus. This is so incredibly important all throughout the year, but especially in this time, right? This, it, th Jesus is the very reason for the season. And we get so caught up in all the other stuff, right? It, Advent is so much more than a countdown to Christmas. It's a sacred journey. It's a sacred journey that helps us reflect and grow closer to God. When he, when, or excuse me, when we make Jesus the focus of Advent, every moment becomes an opportunity for growth. We need to be intentional about choosing to make Advent a priority. It's important that we embrace the joy of the season centered on the one who brings everlasting hope and love. Amen? Mm, right? And by centering our minds on, and excuse me, and our hearts on Jesus, we find a source of unwavering peace, joy, 
and purpose. Listen, if you are not experiencing peace in the holiday season, granted, don't get me wrong, I totally understand that there are lots of emotions that go around with the holiday season. But let me tell you, when you turn and put your focus back on Jesus, on the one who is, tr- you know, that the season is truly about, that's where you find your source of peace, joy, and fulfillment. It's putting it back on him. So how do we make Jesus a priority during Advent? By getting into his word. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Tammy, Tammy, I just don't have time. Things are crazy. I know. I know. Do it anyway. And let me tell you, we got to think outside the box, my friend. It doesn't have to look a certain way. Remember way back when, in an episode when we started this season, we talked about unrealistic expectations surrounding God, right? Surrounding our faith walk. Let's let go of unrealistic expectations and think outside the box. Maybe get up 10 to 15 minutes earlier. Prep everything the night before. Have it sitting out ready to go. So with your Bible open, and just sit down and read for a few minutes. The other thing you can do is listen to the Glorify app. Um, In the Grow Your Faith community, we've really, really come to love this Glorify app. By the way, shout out to all my Grow Your Faith community members. Love, we're loving that app. And you can listen to it on your morning commute while you're walking around the house, putting up Christmas decorations, while you're, um, you know, running out to do Christmas shopping or running to work or doing your, you know, out at the gym. Put on the Glorify app and listen to the sermon. Another way you can get into the Bible, I've got you, my friend. I've told you I'm here for you. I've got a free 30-day Advent Scripture Challenge for you. All you have to do is go to footprintsofinspiration.com slash Advent. And by the way, I'll put that link in the show notes. Sign up for that and I'll send you a new verse every day. You don't even have to think about the verse or try to figure out where to start. I'll take care of you. Go again, footprintsofinspiration.com slash Advent to help you stay centered on Jesus throughout the Advent season. So that was step number one, keeping your focus on Jesus. Step number two is to take care of, se- of yourself first. Mm. Listen, friend, you've probably heard the saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. And Lord have mercy, when it comes to the holiday season, we wind up doing that, right? I certainly was doing that when I shared my story at the beginning of the episode, right? I was trying to pour from an empty cup and I had nothing left to give. Self-care is so incredibly important if we want to make the most of the season. Listen, in one of my favorite self-care books, my friend Lisa Kimry writes this, and by the way, it's called The Self-Care Impact. She writes this, when the ownership and activity of your self-care is submitted as a form of worship to God, the burden or responsibility of self-care becomes a blessing or source of respite to you. Let me repeat that again. When the form of self-care, or when when it's submitted as a form of worship to God, the burden or responsibility of self-care becomes a blessing or source of respite to you. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't like taking breaks during my day. I don't. I, I get so engrossed in what I'm doing. I don't like to take breaks. I don't like to exercise. I really don't. It's like one of the worst, like I just hate doing it. But I know I have to from mental, for me to be my best mentally, physically, right? And, and here's the thing, what I've had to do is I make it about God. I take that quote to heart that Lisa has in her book. I make it about God, not about me. Because if I make it about me, I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'll put me last every single time. But what we've got to do is we've got to make it a form of worship. And what better way to make the most out of Advent season than to ensure that we are making it a form of worship, our self-care as a form of worship and giving it to God, right? And, And doing that as a form of worship to God. That's what I meant to say. We've got to take care of ourselves, friends. So I, I, my prayer is that this 
really gives you that kick in the pants you need to say, all right, I'm going to do that this week. I'm going to make sure I get up and start moving, right? That's something I have to do. I'll have to go and walk around. I've got a pretty big yard. Go out and walk around. In the, in the winter especially, I love to walk around. Um, we have trails in our woods. We, we live on quite a few acres and we have trails in our woods. I don't like to go out there in the summer because of snakes and ticks. But, but yeah, in, um, I love to go out there in, in the winter and just walk the trails. It gets me moving. It doesn't have to be anything big or, or um, elaborate, right? Maybe for you, self-care is reading your favorite book. So you take 20 minutes out of, you know, just maybe the middle part of your day or a little bit in the afternoon and you read a good book. You know, you read a chapter in your book. Whatever works for you, my friend. But what I want you to do is choose to make self-care your second priority. First priority, Jesus. Second priority, is self-care, right? And then here's what I want you to do. If you're watching on YouTube, I want you to comment below and tell me one thing you're gonna make, uh, that you're gonna do to make self-care a priority this Advent season. If you're not, if you're listening to me on your favorite podcast player, send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook and let me know that same thing. What is the one thing you're gonna do to make your self-care a priority this Advent season? Listen. You want to get to the end of the season and be able to reflect back and think, oh, that wasn't hectic. I enjoyed this season. Ah, make sure you bring, that you, that you include self-care in your routine, into your Advent season. That is so incredibly important. And step number three of making the most of your Advent season is enjoy time with your family. Here's what I want to stress about this. Make this a time that your family will look back on with fond memories. When you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off, not making great memories, your, your family's not going to look back on it as, as an important time. So let me give you an example. This year for me is going to be a very busy December. I've got a big project I'm working on for Footprints of Inspiration. Woo! super excited, huge project. It's going to be really busy. So what I did this year, I did something I've never done before. I actually put up my Christmas tree and this usually, by the way, I have so much Christmas stuff because I love Christmas. I love decorating all the things. And it usually takes me two to three days to decorate for Christmas. Ridiculous, I know. And so this year I am going to be so busy. My youngest just moved out. Oh, be still my heart. And at the time that I am recording this, whew, yeah, I was shedding some tears. I think it was just yesterday as he was moving some things out. But, um, but yeah, my kids aren't going to be here. I'm going to have a really busy December. I put up my Christmas tree early before Thanksgiving this year. Now in years past, I would have never done that. I like to celebrate Thanksgiving and then celebrate Christmas. But the thing is, is I needed to make my mental health a priority. And so in order to do that, I needed to get the Christmas tree up. I only put a smattering of other things out. I didn't go full on and I called it a day. That's it for Christmas this year because I need to keep my mental health in check. I need to make sure that I am focusing on what really needs to be done this holiday season, right? Thinking ahead. And I want to give you permission to do the same thing. Look at some of the things you, that you've done in the years past. What can you let go of? That really doesn't matter. And when you, when you do that, that's going to open up time for you to spend with your family. Go see the Christmas lights together. Go Christmas caroling. Like, I don't even know. Does anyone do Christmas caroling anymore? I totally think we should. I think that is so cool. Have everyone come over and help you decorate the Christmas tree this year. You don't have to make it a big ordeal. You don't have to feed everybody. Have everybody bring a dish to share and play some Christmas music and decorate the Christmas tree. Do some Christmas baking together. Have everyone bring what they want to make. This is what we do in our family. Um, whatever cookies or you know whatever holiday baking we want to do, we bring the ingredients for what we want and then we make enough that we share with everyone. Super easy, lots of fun. We enjoy it. Friend, this, this time with your family can be life-changing for them. When they see you less hurried, 
right? When they see you not feeling so chaotic and all out of control, uh, sorry, Quigley is wanting some attention here if you're watching on uh, YouTube, uh, but uh, yeah, he, he just needs a little attention, isn't he cute? Anyway, make this about your family. Show your family what the true meaning of Christmas is. Show your family by letting the kids see you getting into the Bible, reading that Bible, you know, and, and by the way, when you're taking them to school, listen to some Advent scriptures from YouTube. Just pull those up on YouTube and listen to them on your way to, um, on your way to drop off or pick up or to practice, right? Let your kids see what this tr season is truly about. Don't let them see a hurried, like, like running around like a chicken with your head cut off mom or grandmother. Bring them into this and let them see that the, the priorities of God in action, right? Jesus, self-care, knowing that you are pouring into yourself before you can take care of anyone else. That's huge, my friend. That's huge. You're going to give your child far more than you ever could when you're running around and, not, and, and putting yourself last. And finally, making that time. Start some new traditions. When you start letting go of some of those things that truly don't matter, you can start new traditions, traditions that are going to form phenomenal, incredible incredible memories for years to come. So listen, friend, let me go back over the three things. Actually, four. I'll, I'll start with the priorities of God. Again, that's God, self-care, spouse, family, ministry, and work. And the three steps to making the most out of your Advent season is number one, putting God first. Don't forget, I've got that free Advent scripture challenge. Hop on over footprintsofinspiration.com slash advent and sign up for that. I'll send you a new verse every morning so you don't even have to think about it. You can pull it up before you even get out of bed. Open your email, read that. Mm, talk about a great way to start the morning before you even make it out of bed. Number two, self-care. Intentionally choose to do something this Advent season that's going to help your mental health, your physical health, that's going to pour into you so that you can then pour into the rest of your family and friends, right? And number three, make your family a priority. Take a, take a step back and take inventory of what's really important and show your family by making them a priority. Sorry, friends, I know. Quigley just likes to have love, love. So, so anyway, I hope this blessed you today. Listen, my mission is to help women just like you get out there and, and grow closer to God by prayer, learning how to pray, right? Getting into the Bible and learning how to apply scripture to our life, right? Reading the Bible is incredibly important, but we have to learn how to take it and apply it to our life just like making the most of Advent, just like we're talking about in this very episode, we have to make the way to apply it is to walk this stuff out. And so that is my mission. And so friend, if you would do me a favor and share this episode with a friend, listen, Christmas gets hectic for all of us, but we want to really slow down. So if you would do me a favor, share this with your friends and family, this episode with them, share it with them, let them know, hey, listen, I listened to this episode. Let's let's have accountability partners, right? Let's hold each other accountable this Advent season and check in with each other. Like start a little group text with your friends or your family. Say, hey, what, what did you do today? Today, I did this for my self-care. Today, I started my morning. Today, I got into the word in this way, right? Get, get an accountability group going. So share this with them. And then work together to make it happen, right? We all do better when we have when we, we hold each other accountable for something, right? So let's do this, friends. I, my mission is to help you have a more peaceful, memorable, enjoyable holiday this year. 
and it starts by making the most of Advent. So friends, listen, I love meeting with you. I appreciate that you show up each and every week. I do not take that lightly. It means the world to me. And uh, if you or wherever you are listening, of course, be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on any episodes. And then I will see you back here next week for another episode of a Faithful God podcast.